In this video, I'd like to talk about why you should reconsider living in Turkey. So I actually lived in Turkey for around nine months and I actually really enjoyed it. So I want to be clear, this video is not really about why Turkey is not a good place or something like this. I actually think Turkey is a pretty good place to live, one of the better places in the world. However, there are some things you should be aware of before moving there and just to make sure you have a good experience. So. I'm just, I just want to be clear about that. I think Turkey is actually a pretty good place to live. I'll probably do a video on like the things I enjoy about Turkey and like about Turkey in a future uh, video on YouTube. But for now, I just want to make people aware of things you should understand and know before you decide to move to Turkey. So the first thing would be Turkey is a very nationalistic country. So. And what I mean by that is like Turkish people really enjoy their country. They love their country. They're not they're not like Americans or like British people or like a lot of Europeans where they kind of uh, dislike their own country, where they think like, oh, the government is terrible, the uh, society is falling apart. That's that's not really how Turkish people think most of the time. When Turkish people are having economic troubles and struggles, they're going through hard times. They don't really turn against their uh, country. They actually enjoy their country and their language. This is something that might be kind of weird to a lot of Western people, but Turkish people love Turkey. Um, so if you're going to be moving to Turkey, living there more than a few months, you're going to want to learn some Turkish. And you're going to want to like integrate into Turkey a bit. So okay, of course you're not going to really become Turkish if you're just living there a few years. Uh, you're not going to fully integrate, but you should learn some Turkish. You should be respectful. You should uh, understand that Turkish people really do like Turkey. They appreciate when you learn Turkish. And if you're not really learning Turkish, why the hell are you learning? Why, like, why are you in Turkey? Let's, let's just be real about that. Why are you in Turkey? That's going to be kind of what a lot of Turkish people will think. And I kind of agree, quite frankly. If you're going to be living in Turkey, English isn't a very common language there. It's spoken a bit, especially in uh, Istanbul and Antalya and stuff. But Come on, just just learn some Turkish if you're gonna be moving there. If you don't want to learn Turkish, just just choose another place. That's that's what I'd say. But really, you can live there if you don't li learn Turkish. You will do okay. You can get by. But come on, be respectful. Learn some Turkish if you're gonna live in Turkey. And don't mind that like Turkish people like Turkey a lot. Like don't talk bad about Turkey. Turkey, really, given its situation, is doing fantastic. Um, just given its situation, its history, it's actually doing pretty good. So just keep that in mind and uh, yeah, let's move on. So the next thing you really should uh, understand is food in Turkey is, you have lots of variety in certain places. So if you're in Istanbul, you got, you got the best food in the world. You got all types of food. You got great Turkish food. You got like these Turkish cafeteers that have amazing food. I think it's called like lakantasi, something like this. That's how it's spelled. I'm, Honestly, like I said before, I, I I lived in Turkey a while, but I didn't learn Turkish too well. That's why I'm saying that to start because, uh, well, I lived in Turkey like three months here and then I lived there another few months and then I had to leave. And so it was just kind of complicated. I wasn't, I didn't really realize I was going to be living there almost a year. So or actually, yeah, probably I stayed there about a year. So I didn't really end up learning Turkish, but forgive me, but it's like a lock and tasi restaurant. Those are amazing. They're all over Istanbul. Um, but like a cafeteria type of restaurant or buffet type of restaurant, really good. And then there's just, Istanbul has so many types of really good restaurants and they have a lot of variety of restaurants. So you can really get, if you want, I don't know, Egyptian food. There's some Egyptian restaurants there that are really good, ran by Egyptian people. You want uh, some Lebanese food, they, they got it. You want, uh, I don't know, sushi, you just some Japanese food, they got it. You want some Chinese food, it might be a little bit harder, but they do got it. It's somewhere in there they have it. But really, the Turkish food is really exceptional, um, especially in Istanbul. So you, you won't really be too struggling for food if you're in a place like Istanbul or Antalya. However, if you do go to one of the smaller towns, the food options become increasingly limited because, uh, I don't know, what most Turkish people eat, especially Turkish people eat when they're out, is not very, there's not a lot of options there. And what I mean by that in terms of there's not going to be a lot of options is you're going to still have fresh fruit and vegetables, uh, especially fresh fruit. We have lots of really good fresh fruit in Turkey, actually. But you're not going to, if you go out to restaurants, you're pretty much going to be stuck with the same five, ten items. Everyone kind of cooks the same sort of thing. I mean, you have your own little twist on it, but you're going to pretty much be having some lentil soup, some sort of meat if you like meat, some sort of flatbread, and some rice pilaf type of thing or bulgur pilaf, something around these lines. And it's not bad to me. I actually really enjoy Turkish food and that sort of food. I I don't know, I've 
I, I ate it and I lived in the countryside a long time, barely even cooked it for myself for a while, and it wasn't really bad. But if you're from, I don't know, US or Europe, you might get kind of bored of these sort of food if you're not, if you're not used to living around the world and different cultures and different food. But to me, I grew up in the US, I didn't really like American food very much, so I actually prefer Turkish foods. It feels more like home than uh, American food. So I didn't really mind this, but it's something to really be aware of. Um, if you go to one of these smaller towns or cities, your food options will get increasingly more limited until if you're in a smaller town, say less than 10,000 people or so, you're not gonna really have any foreign food options and you're gonna be stuck with just a very select, uh, very small menu from Turkish restaurants. The food's still good, but you're not gonna have much variety. So you will probably wanna cook at home some, um, and yeah. And kind of similar to the food, in smaller towns, or in, let's start, in, in Istanbul, you're gonna have pretty good access to goods. So ordering things online isn't really uh, very popular um, in Turkey. I mean, people do it actually, people do it quite a bit, but for foreigners, they don't really, uh, expats, they don't really, it's a little more difficult because a lot of the language, well, a lot of the online portals for shopping are exclusively in Turkish and it's just more difficult. So you're probably gonna be buying most things in person and it's not too big of an issue in a place like Istanbul and Tallinn. You can pretty much find whatever you want. Um, if you want some specialty weird thing, like you want, I remember one time I was trying to buy a specific brand of a hiking backpack in Istanbul or hiking shoes also, and it was very difficult to find. But other than this, you're gonna be able to find whatever you want. Any sort of like beauty products, healthcare, um, supplements, vitamins, uh, clothing. You can pretty much find whatever you want in a place like Istanbul or Antalya, just walking around the shops within 10, 20 minute walk from you. So finding goods and access to goods there is really good. But again, if you go to one of these smaller towns, similar to food, you're gonna have a very limited selection of products. And really, they have everything you need um, to live and get by. But if you're looking for some specific thing, you might have to import it or you might have to actually figure out how to shop online and order it from one of the bigger cities. And it could be a little bit uh, more complicated. So you don't have like the, uh, you don't have quite the level of ease of access to goods that you do have in certain foreign countries like um, the US, Canada, China, Thailand. You, you have a little bit less access to goods, particularly in the countryside of Turkey. So it's something to be aware of as well. Another thing to be aware of is the environment in Turkey. It's quite clean. They keep things quite, I don't want to say historic, but they keep things with uh, quality construction in my opinion, most of the time. So everything's built of stone or cement that's reinforced and it's very good quality buildings, good quality materials, the sidewalks, the roads are put together nicely and it looks nice. So you have a good environment to live in. However, there is one downside I want to mention, and that's if you stay in the city, city center, so the tourist district of a lot of cities, so it's something I encountered a lot, especially with, um, with me and my wife, um, it's something we don't really like too much, is in the city center or city center. So say in the tourist district of Antalya or in uh, a certain area of Katikoy in Istanbul, it will be primarily bars and people smoking way, way, way too much. So a lot of young Turkish people have this really bad habit of smoking as well as drinking a lot. So if you go to these city centers, um, they can be quite disgusting. Too many people smoking, too much drinking, uh, quite a few people just behaving like hooligans, and uh, it's, it's quite unfortunate. With that being said, if you just go 10 minutes away from these city centers, it's not an issue, you don't see it at all, you don't experience it at all. So. Turkey, that's one thing I do really appreciate, is they segregate this sort of nightlife or this sort of environment to certain areas of your city. And then if it's outside of that area, you're not gonna see it at all. So it's just something to be aware of if you're going to Turkey or you're planning to live there, um, especially if you haven't been before, just pick one of these suburbs a bit more or a little bit outside the city center. Like you might have a little bit access, like less access to good restaurants, but you're gonna, the quality of life, the living environment, and just the behavior of people will be much better. Because Turkish people are really clean and respectful. Most don't have like too many bad habits. Sometimes people smoke occasionally, but it's not too big of a deal. But if you go to a city center, it's just a lot of the time, you near know, like the bars and stuff, it gets quite disgusting and it's kind of a nightmare. So just stay away from that little section and you're cool. And to touch on that a bit more in terms of like lifestyle. So. There is quite a bit of drinking and smoking in the city centers like that, um, which you might not expect given Turkey's like a Muslim country and everything, but a lot of young people actually do engage in it. 
but it's really reg regulated to be city centers. However, just to be clear about that, like I mentioned Caddy Koi before. It's one of my favorite areas of Istanbul, actually. The area that's like that is about, I don't know, maybe the size of 100 square meters. Like 100 square meters, that's about it. Maybe 200 square meters, or, yeah, like 200, uh, a thousand square meters, sorry, I had my numbers messed up, about a thousand square meter area um, of the city. So just a couple blocks, that's it. Once you're outside of that area, you can be a 10, 15 minute walk from this area, still in Caddy Koi, still in the center of Caddy Koi, next to all the ferries and stuff. And you won't hear any of this, you won't experience any of this, you're fine. And you have this nice garden, or you have this nice sea view, you have apartments right there, you have this nice park all along it, and of course you have great access to fantastic restaurants. So I just want to be clear about that. The, like in terms of lifestyle, this doesn't really affect you. Just be aware of it. Don't stay in this area. Don't stay directly on it. Just stay five, 10 minute walk away and you're great. Um, in terms of your lifestyle as well, just generally, so staying a little bit away like that, it allows you access to everything and it allows you a very peaceful life um, with parks. And that's another thing I really appreciate in Turkey. There's lots of parks, uh, really big parks actually, a lot of the time. And it's just, it's a really good lifestyle. You go to the grocery store, you can cook at home or you can eat out, eating out. It's quite expensive for locals to be quite honest. Um, or at least it was in 2020, 2021 and 2022. Uh, the Turkish economy has improved quite a bit in the last year. So it's becoming slightly more affordable for locals, but still uh, eating out is a little expensive for locals a lot of the time, but there are some affordable restaurants as well. So for foreigners, usually pretty much everything's quite affordable. Um, however, they do have some uh, cheaper restaurants as well if you have, for whatever reason, on a very tight budget. You can eat in Caddy Koi for, I don't know, I guess I should put it in US dollar terms, uh, about $2 for a big plate of food. And uh, yeah, that's that, like one place I used to go to a lot was around that price, and you had lots of college students and stuff going there. So yeah, um, that's kind of like the lifestyle you can expect. Um, again, if you're in these small towns, your lifestyle can be a bit different um, because you don't have as many good restaurants nearby that have a variety of food and you might not have quite as big of parks. But there's still plenty of nature around. It's still nice to walk around. The environment's clean. They use good construction. So really, the small towns are also actually like the living environment and your lifestyle. It's just, it's slightly different. You're going to want to probably cook at home more than instead of just eating out mostly. Okay, the last thing I'd really like to talk about in this video is the weather. So like, Turkey... It's one of the things I kind of like about Turkey, but I kind of don't. So because it's not hot too much of a year, most people don't have air conditioning. Um, but for about two, three weeks of the summer, it's going to be boiling hot. You're just, you're going to be quite miserable um, a lot of the time, depending on your apartment, of course. Like if you're, if you're like uh, ground floor or second floor and there's a few floors to the building, you're going to be fine. But if you're at the top floor or just some, some, you, you can imagine there are certain circumstances where the sun's hitting directly on your apartment, you're going to be boiling hot. And it's just like two, three weeks there. Um, it's something to be aware of. Um, so if you're going to be going and visiting Turkey and checking it out as a place to live and you're going in July, maybe reconsider, maybe go in a couple months because it's going to be quite hot. Um, similarly, if you go during winter time, especially, I believe it's around like around like February, March, uh, or also sometimes uh, late December, you can get this really freezing weather that is uniquely miserable. So in Istanbul one time, I was staying there and this happened to me, and it's basically what ended up happening is a lot of the airports even shut down. This was, I don't know, one, two years back. A lot of the airports shut down on the streets. It was covered in this like icy sludge. People are slipping quite a bit. I almost slipped, um, almost, thankfully, but it was just the entire city kind of shut down because they're not too used to having ice. And when you have this like temperature where it's right near freezing, but it's not super freezing, you can't really mitigate a lot of the ice issues and you can't, like you get this slushiness in, like, a, like literally slushy, like you blended ice with water. And it's just a mess and it caused a lot of issues. But this is like maybe one to three weeks again um, of the weather. During these two periods, it's either freezing cold, bone chilling, and it's kind of can cause some logistical issues to say the least, or it can be quite boiling hot and you might not have air conditioning. But I love in most three weeks during summer and three weeks during winter, 
the weather in Turkey is honestly some of the best. The winters don't get too, too cold. Um, it gets a little colder if you have near like chaps on or something like this. I'm probably saying that wrong, I'm sorry. But it's uh, like, if you're in the northeast of the country, it can be get a bit colder. If you're in the mountains of the country, of course, it'll be a bit colder. But it doesn't really get too, too cold or too, too hot in most places people are staying. Istanbul is really comfortable, probably 10 months out of the year. And it's just, yeah, the weather's really actually quite good in Turkey, but it's something to be aware of. Summers, as well as winters, can be a little bit on extremes. And because Turkey, they don't really... So they have internal heating. In most buildings, you'll have like a central heating system. I believe it's ran by the city, not actually the buildings, but I'm not. It depends on the area. Um, and this works very good. You're gonna stay really warm during winter. But during summer, a lot of people don't have any sort of air conditioner. So it's something to keep in mind. You could, if you go during summer, it can be hot. Don't let this ruin your experience. Uh, have this in your expectations. It's easier to mitigate if you actually live there um, or if you just are aware of it. So that's why I'm mentioning it. So that's really gonna be all for this video. The only thing I'd like to talk about now is what is the future of Turkey? So the future of Turkey, if you're deciding to move there, you have to really think out a bit. So the future of Turkey, um, the economy is improving. The situations are improving. There are some, a little bit of issues you should be aware of. So if you're thinking of doing like the Turkish citizenship by investment program where you buy real estate and you get Turkish citizenship, Keep in mind, again, you're going to want to learn uh, Turkish if you're going to become a Turkish citizen. Otherwise, it's just kind of absurd. Um, as well as you should be aware of the opposition party um, in Turkey has talked about like uh, canceling a lot of people's citizenships who went through this program. So it's something to be aware of. I don't think the opposition is going to win. Most people actually like Erdogan and like his government, it seems like. So I really wouldn't be too concerned about this, but it is something to be aware of. Politically, there's not really too much to be too concerned about in Turkey. The only issue is uh, Turkish people are kind of bothered by it a bit, it seems like, which is a lot of the like Syrian and Iraqi immigrants um, that or refugees that end up stopping in Turkey and some of them settling down. And uh, this is a little bit of an issue because it seems like uh, the government is kind of allowing it, or at least it was when I was there. And it was causing some social tension between them and these like Syrian immigrants because the Arabic area, um, the Syrian area, would uh, everyone would just have signs in Arabic, speak Arabic. Nobody was really integrating into Turkey. So you'd go there and there wouldn't be Turkish signs. There wouldn't be, a lot of them wouldn't even speak Turkish. And this was bothering a lot of the Turkish people I met when I was there in Turkey. So is this really still going on? Um, maybe, maybe quite a bit it is but it's not as big of the social issues and as big of the uh, issues generally that other countries are having. So the issues in Turkey are much smaller than the issues in Western Europe or the US or Canada, um, where you're getting a lot of, uh, a lot of like political violence and a lot of political issues, higher taxes. You don't really have these issues in Turkey. Um, so yeah, the future of Turkey seems pretty reasonably good, um, but there are some things you should be aware of. But yeah, that's really gonna be all for this video. Or you know what, before we close out the video, you know, let's just talk about it. Where do I think is the best places to live in Turkey? So to me, I actually really like Istanbul. To me, if I was gonna go live in Turkey, Istanbul would probably be my spot. So really, I prefer Kedikoy. However, the suburbs of Istanbul, so a lot of people try to stay in the city center, especially on the European side. To me, this area is kind of busy. It's a little expensive for what you're getting and I don't really like it as much. So to me, uh, I prefer the Asian side, just generally, but I prefer the Asian side near Katikoy or the suburbs. So the suburbs, you have very good access to goods as well. Um, everything's really kind of the same, although you're gonna be cooking a little bit more at home and you might wanna call um, to go to some of the hypermarkets. So they have a lot of really big markets like Careful and stuff where you can buy basically anything you want, as well as like Decathlon for sports and outdoor goods. And it's just very convenient, very easy. But you might wanna call just, uh, you don't really need one because they have a pretty good bus system in Turkey. Um, so, but you might wanna call if you're staying in the suburbs. Alternatively, um, Antalya, to me, it's a little bit too relaxed of a city, given its size. So, like, uh, it doesn't really feel like you're in a big city, even though it is kind of a medium-sized city. So, it's it's another one that's okay, but I'd say, again, stay outside the city center. Uh, I don't really have any strong preference on where there, to be quite honest. Um, Izmir is a city I don't really like in the city of Izmir. Um, when I was there, it was quite messed up. Too many... Uh, 
of the Syrian refugees and quite a bit of conflict regarding that. Um, but as in the city center, if you go outside to like the tourist area along the water um, or just across the water, um, a little bit outside the city of Izmir, then uh, it is much, much better. It's very clean. It's just like you're in Istanbul, basically. Um, so those are some options. In terms of small towns, of course, there is like Bodrum and stuff or Bodrum. A lot of people like it there. To me, it's a little too touristy. Um, I would prefer one of the towns like uh, that mountain town. I forget the name, hold on. Okay, I checked, it's Bursa. Bursa, to me, is also pretty good to live in. Um, it's not too far from Istanbul, and just generally, it has quite a bit of nature nearby, and it has plenty of access to goods, the environment's quite good, and I don't know, it's a very nice city. Trabzon, I also like. Um, yeah, it, it, it's a pretty good place as well. And some place I'm not a big fan of would be the capital, Ankara, and Gaziantep. So, Ankara is just, uh, I don't know, I just, I don't like the city. Um, Gaziantep, it's a little too, it's a little too, like, like as if it is Iraq or Syria or something. It doesn't feel quite as Turkish. So it's, it's good for a visit. I actually liked it, but in terms of actually living there, I, I would say it's not for me, as well as it has, I'd have some geopolitical concerns, uh, security concerns regarding staying there, as well as, of course, they are... Like, they did have a big earthquake not too long ago. That was very unfortunate. It really damaged a lot there. Uh, they've improved it a lot. I mean, Turkish government really did help out a lot. But the building quality in Gaziantep and the other cities nearby is just not up to the same standards that the rest of Turkey is. So I really kind of not choose to live in that area. So, yeah. That's now going to really be all for this video. If you have any thoughts or questions regarding living in Turkey or anything like that or want to share your experiences, feel free to leave those down below. But with that being said, bye-bye.